let's start. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining uh, DemoPoint Academy sessions. My name is Yael Hacker, and uh, together with me is Shai Levine and also um, people from R&D, which I will later on present, that are going to demonstrate our next session. Uh, just a few words about DemoPoint. The idea with DemoPoint Academy, uh, as you are already familiar with, are to always increase your knowledge, to increase your confidence. Each time that we're doing DemoPoint Academy, we, we present different technology, which is based on your feedback, ba based on your request. So, uh, based on your uh, request to, to give you more knowledge and to help you uh, present our products better to our customers when you visit them, when you visit them. And also when you uh, train yourself, when you learn the product, it's also a good uh, tool for you to learn our technologies and be able to talk about it uh, with more confidence. Um, so today, the, the blueprint that we're going to talk about is identity awareness. Uh, I have here Lior, Cohen, and Svi from R&D who will um, present to you the demo and you will have at the end uh, the ability to ask questions directly to, the, to them. So keep your questions and at the end we will have time also for Q&A. So, uh, thank you. Here is Lior. Thank you, Yael, for this introduction. So, uh, uh, hi, everyone, again, thank you for joining us. This is uh, Lior, I'm here also with Svi, uh, the hey, manager uh, for Identity Awareness. Um, and stay tuned for the entirety of this session, because at the uh, last part of the session, we're going also to talk a bit about what's coming soon on 80.20 that will be released uh, uh, relatively soon. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit uh, about uh, some new case use cases that will be uh, uh, open for our customers and some uh, exciting uh, new stuff that we'll be introducing in this version as well. So, um, let me uh, uh, spin up the environment real quick and as uh, Yael mentioned, as Yael mentioned, all of the environments, all of the labs that we're using to demonstrate are available for you on the uh, uh, Cloud Demo Point uh, portal that you have in uh, Checkpoint.com under User Center for every user that has access to Partner Map. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, we'll be using uh, this specific uh, blueprint just in order to understand how to deploy this uh, uh, and how to actually reach this uh, blueprint. It's actually quite uh, uh, straightforward. Okay, so you'd access, uh, um, uh, you just uh, uh, start by accessing uh, checkpoint.com and on checkpoint.com, as I mentioned, uh, you have uh, uh, the uh, user center, under user center, assets and info, demo point environment. This is true for all the demo point environments. We're going to uh, uh, we're going to uh, demonstrate today the uh, identity awareness one as part of the Infinity Suite. Okay, so again, uh, uh, you'll need to select the relevant region, preferably one that has uh, the uh, uh, most uh, uh, or the optimal uh, um, latency to your environment, meaning physically closest to you. And under the uh, Infinity Suite uh, uh, Security uh, Management, you have the second blueprint, which is Identity Awareness, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, uh, Identity Awareness has been around with us uh, for quite a while now. However, we really like this uh, uh, blueprint, and we receive a lot of very good feedback on it because, first of all, it uh, uh, combines quite a lot of uh, uh, different integration pieces that we have as part of our Infinity Suite. So this is a great opportunity to demonstrate to customers the effectiveness of using uh, Identity Awareness Access Role combined with uh, application control, URL filtering, the threat prevention mechanisms. So it also uh, um, improves this notion that some customer has that Identity Awareness is only about identity and access management and it allows them to understand that the solution is also increasing the value of the threat prevention and security mechanisms that they have. So it's exactly this kind of uh, um, 
uh, mixture that you want to uh, be able to demonstrate in a relatively short uh, time frame to your customers that would make for a very effective demo, as we will show now. Now, one more important thing, uh, you have two different ways to ask questions during this uh, uh, session. There are quite a lot of people uh, in here, so we won't do it uh, in voice, but you can write down your uh, questions on the chat or on the Q&A tab, whatever you prefer. Um, we'll try to allocate two different time windows for, uh, um, for questions during this session. So once you spin up the environment, the demo environment, you immediately have access to the uh, uh, cookbook that is basically a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, guide. I will try to stick to this guide during the demonstration itself. So uh, uh, definitely you have the cookbook that describes the topology, uh, a high-level explanation of the solution and value and so on. And uh, you'll have access to all the uh, uh, different step-by-step. -step. Obviously, this is just a recommendation for you guys. Um, you're all very uh, uh, experienced and skillful people, so obviously pick and choose whatever is relevant for your use case, for your customer, and for your specific opportunity when you, uh, uh, when you choose which sections are more relevant, which sections uh, requires maybe even more emphasis than what we've added. This is basically a sandbox environment, so you can play around with it, quite a lot of different components. Uh, and uh, uh, you can pick and choose what you want to demonstrate. There is also quite a lot of room to extend what the demo includes. So I'm going to, dem to uh, uh, also show the uh, cookbook real quick. It starts, at, as I said, with uh, high-level topology. What we did here is to create uh, uh, something of a common uh, uh, medium-size uh, uh, corporate environment that allows us to demonstrate quite a lot of things. Uh, starting from uh, a gateway that is deployed on the uh, uh, a perimeter gateway that's deployed on the external subnets, connected to some sort of a DMZ, connecting directly to the internet. Uh, and uh, uh, we're deploying this gateway to demonstrate what can you do when you need to uh, uh, connect your PEP, your enforcement uh, entity, into uh, identity sources. But since the gateway is deployed in a perimeter, it cannot be directly connected into the identity source that will be Active Directory in, in our case. Uh, so you get to demonstrate identity sharing, which is quite cool. I don't know if uh, many of you have tried it, but it's extremely efficient uh, for a, a medium and large scale environment and for environment with constraints. You also get to demonstrate the user experience, the end user experience. This is the most important part of identity awareness. So uh, as part of the blueprint, you have uh, basically a workstation that uh, two different users will be connecting to, obviously each one getting its own kind of profile with, own, uh, with its own logging, auditing, access control, and even threat prevention profile. I'll show that uh, uh, briefly soon. Uh, and we have a, an internal gateway here, a kind of LAN slash data center gateway that's protecting the shared services uh, subnet and the management uh, uh, out-of-band uh, um, uh, subnet as well, where we have all of our management components that starting with the security management server, uh, 8010 uh, in this case, we will upgrade the environment obviously once 8020 is out. Uh, you have the uh, identity collector, which is a super important integration piece. In this demonstration, we will be connecting to the domain controllers, but we will not be doing it directly from the gateways, but rather through the extremely efficient and effective uh, uh, intermediate point of the identity collector, basically going through the identity collector, meaning integrating our gateways, our decision point gateways, the PDPs, with identity collector and not connecting directly to the domain controller, allows us to integrate in a much more efficient way that reduces the load both from the domain controllers and from the gateways themselves. So this is a very good way to also uh, uh, start illustrating to our customers some of the identity awareness best practices when it comes to working with various identity sources. So in this demonstration, we'll have the central gateway, the LAN gateway connecting into the identity control, the identity collector, which in turn is integrated with a domain controller we have within the environment. Now, again, sometimes people use this uh, uh, 
uh, blueprint, even just to take a look at the best practice configuration and uh, uh, understand the, uh, what is the best way to use the uh, various identity sources, what configuration should be done, how, in, uh, uh, how a domain controller uh, should look like in terms of structure. So this is all like valid, uh, uh, valid uh, usage of this uh, blueprint. It's not just for presenting, it's also for preparing for POCs and so on. So now that we understand a bit better how our environment looks like, let's start looking at the various building blocks that we have. So we have the uh, administrator, uh, uh, the administrator console, where you will have access to the smart console of the management server managing those gateways, as well as the identity collector, an important integration piece, as I've mentioned. The identity collector, in case you haven't encountered it yet or haven't used that yet, is a sort of a hybrid machine, part checkpoint, part Microsoft, that is designed to uh, uh, that is designed to uh, aggregate all of our uh, connections to the uh, uh, Active Directory domain controllers. It can connect to up to 35 domain controllers, and uh, uh, basically create a much more effective integration with the uh, uh, Active Directory to our gateways. It essentially uh, can use to replace the AD query uh, option that was uh, actually quite common and has been with identity awareness for a while. I am saying replace, and I'll try to uh, give several uh, of my own best practices and design best practices during this demonstration. And the reason I'm saying replace is because uh, probably uh, uh, one of the best thing to, uh, uh, that you want to avoid is accessing the same domain controller, the same Active Directory integration, using both uh, identity collector that is connected to that and AD query in parallel on the same gateways. This is something that you definitely want to avoid. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, this environment allows you to not only demonstrate the user experience and the security admin experience, it also will, uh, uh, serves as a very good uh, discussion point on the various integration pieces that we have with the environment for acquiring entities and uh, identities. So under uh, uh, the gateway properties for the internal gateway, that would be the 8010 gateway that you see here, you would have all the various identity sources that we have starting with the uh, uh, browser-based authentication going to uh, other uh, uh, sources that are currently not activated. And for this specific demonstration, we are using the identity collector integration piece, which again leads us to this identity uh, uh, collector that's connected to the domain controller, as well as opportunity to discuss with our customers about identity awareness API, uh, and how this uh, relatively new web API allows for very cool integrations with the third parties. So again, your customers may not always want to integrate just with uh, uh, Active Directory. Maybe they want, uh, maybe they have a NAC solution that supports Radius or some API that we implemented and they want to uh, use that. Maybe they have a Wi-Fi uh, uh, access point that supports Syslog and they want to use and parse those uh, syslog uh, uh, logs and use them as a means to uh, uh, integrate with uh, our environment. Maybe they're using checkpoint identity agents. Maybe they have terminal servers. So uh, this uh, uh, is a very way, a very effective way to start a conversation about identity sources, which are probably one of the uh, most important decisions that someone will do when uh, designing uh, an identity awareness project. Uh, with our solutions. So again, the, uh, uh, in the uh, administrator uh, uh, dashboard, you'll have access to all the managed gateway gateways. You'll have the uh, security policy, uh, uh, you'll have the security policy tab. In here, we created two different policies, one for the, one for the internal, one for the ex external perimeter. And uh, we'll, start with, uh, uh, we'll start with that uh, external uh, uh, policy and start with the obvious use, uh, start with the obvious use of uh, identity awareness, which is uh, providing uh, identity and access management to our customers in an automated way. So this is also a very good opportunity to demonstrate to our customers what, what an access role looks like, uh, uh, how does it actually work, how does it allow the integration 
with uh, uh, the various identity sources and how we define those kind of dynamic containers for users and users groups and devices that will later on give us the uh, complete visibility and automation of access control. So in our example, we have created three different access roles, one for the admins, one for marketing department, and another one for uh, a finance uh, uh, department. And during this, uh, uh, we usually start this presentation by, uh, uh, by showing the structure of these, uh, uh, of these access roles and how they map to the actual uh, uh, resource. This is also a very good opportunity to uh, demonstrate to the customers how easy it is to import new elements, to create new access roles and so on, because it is very intuitive and very simple with a very minimal footprint on the environment. Again, provided that you're using identity collector, a very minimal uh, footprint. And customers are always happy to see uh, uh, that they have uh, uh, this kind of uh, visibility into their uh, directory services from the checkpoint console, from APIs, and so on. So uh, uh, this is always an effective way to demonstrate. Now, looking at our specific uh, uh, at our specific policy, we can see that marketing will start by a, a kind of an outbound uh, use case to demonstrate the access control. So. The marketing guys will have access to Facebook and YouTube and so on. Finance guys will have access to Salesforce and nothing else to or not jeopardize the environment. And uh, uh, you can see I've moved to the client uh, uh, device that that will be the uh, uh, workstation that our uh, uh, that our uh, external users are using. So I'll be connecting first with a user called Anna Smith. So Anna Smith. Uh, uh, as X is part of the uh, uh, finance group. Uh, by the way, if you don't uh, remember that, you have everything here within the uh, uh, guide itself. So going back to Anna, she logged in, she received her profile, and in that profile, she has access to, uh, uh, to everything she needs from Salesforce. And again, we'll see in a minute that that one of the uh, coolest thing about this demonstration is the fact that it incorporates HTTPS inspection and application control and everything just wraps it around uh, uh, everything that has to do with identities. So we'll see that uh, our Anna Smith uh, user has access to Salesforce. She won't have access to Facebook uh, and so on. And for every, uh, uh, for every one of these communications, whether it's allowed or blocked, like we can see here, uh, it will be interesting to uh, uh, give our customers a glimpse to the uh, um, to the uh, look and feel of the logs. Uh, this is also a good opportunity to uh, demonstrate our uh, uh, central management and how the logging works. Okay, so basically we can see that uh, um, this is actually not the log that I was looking for, but uh, uh, okay. So let's take uh, uh, let's take one of the uh, uh, one of the logs that were uh, uh, interesting uh, for us, and we'll start looking at uh, what the system can learn about what kind of external intelligence we can bring to enhance the uh, uh, experience. So when we're looking at one of those logs, we can see that, uh, uh, for example, Anna Smith that uh, was arriving from one specific. Uh, uh, from that specific uh, resource, that specific IP, that specific user, and that specific device. Now, this is not just a lot of metadata that we're bringing in. Uh, keep in mind, it's also possible to define the access roles using the same level of metadata. So I can determine that the same Anna Smith, when she's connecting through mobile, will have certain access. When she's connecting through her laptop, a different access. When she's coming through the next solution, on her uh, uh, wired uh, access, she'll have a, a third different level of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, access. Okay, so uh, these uh, this kind of logs really allow you to open up the discussion with the customer about how we, uh, uh, how we analyze uh, the traffic, what kind of metadata we're bringing in, how is it all related to what we do with HTTPS inspection and so on. You'll see that some of the uh, sub-resources that were loaded during the page were locked, some were allowed, and so on. The use of application control was also uh, uh, 
was also uh, uh, like very apparent here. And in many cases, this can also uh, uh, lead for, again, with the more tech savvy kind of customers, this could also open up the discussion of how we can actually do that without pushing policy and so on, how PDP works, how PEP works. Now, uh, this is uh, probably not something you want to do with every customer and with every like five minutes uh, discussion, but obviously when talking about the more advanced stuff uh, and preparing for POCs and so on, it's worth taking a look at. So now I'm connecting to the internal gateway and I'm doing that because that gateway runs both PDP and PEP, and there are a different, uh, 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 different set of, uh, obviously, the uh, uh, basic uh, troubleshooting commands. You don't have to remember those by heart. We put the best one in the guide itself. So here you can see all the different mapping that the decision point that PEP uh, decided to have. You have the same type of commands for PEP as well. So this is also a very good uh, opportunity to kind of uh, uh, present a very soft version of the troubleshooting guide to your customers where they can actually see how things are mapped, how will it imp impact on uh, uh, enforcement and so on. Another cool thing will be to show CP view where we've added under software blades and this is again just you have the same probably from the obviously from the uh, central management but in this case uh, you can give them uh, some drill down into how Gateway sees those kind of updates whenever we have lo login and so on. And uh, uh, now uh, uh, you can see what we've added for the uh, uh, identity awareness uh, uh, under CP view. Again, a good opportunity to talk about the different uh, identity acquisition methods that we have and identity sources. Sorry, going over the uh, uh, CP view and can demonstrate the real time, uh, real timeness of the uh, uh, of the environment. So this is uh, uh, this is always uh, interesting for the more tax savvy customers. And now that we've demonstrated how the uh, logging looks like and so on, we can continue to play a bit with our environment. So let's say we we have that same uh, uh, that same uh, N. We're logging off from her device and we're connecting to a different user. So now we'll be connecting to Jay Roberts uh, account, which is coming from marketing. Just for sake of convenience, we're using the same password for all of them. Obviously, this is not a recommended practice. So we're connecting to the uh, uh, account of the, uh, the second user. And again, as we're doing those, what you can also do, again, this will be interesting for the more tech savvy customers. You can uh, uh, demonstrate how uh, identity awareness uh, uh, is kind of uh, looking at those uh, specific events. Some customers find it very important for auditing and so on. Sorry. So uh, uh, you'll be able to see that uh, for every login attempt and so on, the, those, uh, 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 those attempts are actually logged and audited within the checkpoint uh, logging as well. And you can demonstrate all the metadata and associations that we create internally in each gateway that will need to handle this user from this point onward. One thing I didn't mention, those users are actually leaving the environment through the external gateway. As I said before, that external gateway is actually not configured with any identity source right now, external identity source. It's only configured with the browser based as a type of uh, uh, backup plan B kind of uh, uh, method. But it is using the identity sharing with the internal gateway this is also something that many customers find interesting. Uh, and while it's very trivial to us, as people who are experienced with uh, working with Checkpoint, if you try to achieve the similar functionality in other solutions that are not centrally managed, this will be extremely complex to achieve. Whereas in our case, it's basically just one click of a button. And as long as it's part of the same management domain, uh, 
you can actually uh, uh, create the identity sharing. And I'm saying that because uh, uh, at the second part of the call, the last one, uh, uh, when we talk a bit about roadmap, we will also address uh, the situation of what happens when you want to share identities between, for example, CMAs, different management domains of the same, uh, of the same customer, which is something that we've recently added. So uh, we saw now that uh, we're able to uh, uh, connect with two different users to the same environment. And once we connect to uh, uh, the same, to a different user, even when coming through the same machine, we didn't change anything within the policy, but still we now have access to uh, Facebook. Let's try Facebook. So we do have access to Facebook and we don't have access to anywhere else probably. This is also like, uh, although it's not the purpose of this uh, uh, blueprint, it's a very good uh, way to demonstrate our URL filtering and application control. Like if I, uh, uh, you saw before, if, it, if I tried to connect to a different kind of, uh, 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 a different kind of environment, like the homepage here was something that's related to uh, Microsoft services, could be Office 365 or Azure or whatever, and we're able to identify that as well. <clears throat> so again, after each of these uh, uh, actions, you can actually uh, uh, demonstrate the logs and again, emphasize to the customer how identity awareness sees that, how it integrates with the rest of the environment. Okay, and basically uh, uh, demonstrate the richness of logs and so on. I know that some customers even use that in order to learn which fields they need to pay attention to when they connect their checkpoint uh, uh, logging platform, for example, into their own SIMSoft. So uh, I have seen uh, cases where people use this blueprint in order to kind of learn how to create those integrations, which is again, uh, a, perfectly, uh, uh, a perfectly good use of the, uh, 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 of the platform, okay? Guys, I see there are already several questions on the various uh, 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 channels, uh, so we'll be referring to these questions very soon. So just a few uh, more minutes of patience and we'll, uh, you'll get answers for everything. So uh, um, again, for every, for every uh, uh, meeting with customers who are not yet familiar with the uh, everything that AT10 uh, 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 brought, this is also a very good opportunity to get some uh, look and feel of the, uh, uh, of the UI and so on. So now with that we've demonstrated the uh, access control portion of the demo, and actually I'm, I'm stretching it with a lot of explanations, but overall it shouldn't take you like more than five minutes to get the uh, right messages across, and this is exactly what we want to achieve. Now we can talk about something that's slightly different, but is just as important. In many cases, our customers associate identity awareness with identity and access management. However, one of the uh, things that we're hoping to achieve as part of this uh, blueprint is to set the notion that identity awareness has an important role in prevention of threats and uh, 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 any kinds of uh, uh, malware to our network. Uh, and we, I'll just show you how we chose to demonstrate it. You can obviously play around with this kind of sandbox environment and, and show it with uh, 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 a lot of different uh, ways. So let's go go back to our uh, uh, to our Anna Smith uh, uh, user here. Now let's uh, uh, assume that Anna Smith is not a very responsible user in the sense that uh, uh, she got one of her devices that has access to uh, finance platform, got it infected with, uh, for sake of this example, uh, got infected with a ransomware bot, just like we've seen with uh, uh, NotPetya and other kind of uh, uh, other kind of uh, uh, security case studies of this sort. We saw that in many cases the uh, uh, the ransomware bots are propagating across uh, uh, all kinds of protocols uh, like SMB and so on. Oh, stop sharing. Okay. Okay, guys, just second. So now we'll show that uh, uh, 
uh, we'll show basically a, a sort of a simulation of that. Obviously, we try to avoid getting uh, uh, real uh, uh, malware on, onto our, or even reverse the uh, uh, malware into our environment. And uh, uh, so, so we'll kind of simulate what this bot will do. So, so let's just say that uh, 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 one of those uh, uh, ransomware bots could have uh, accessed and activated itself, uh, just like not Betty did, on Anne's computer immediately. And then Anna would know that something is wrong and maybe she would change her behavior and so on. She would go and report that her computer was locked and someone from system would uh, load some backups and uh, uh, retrieve some of the files. However, if I'm a clever attacker, I probably want to start encrypting data only after I made sure that I propagate my uh, uh, payload into other devices, again, in, in this specific case, over SMB, over Samba protocol, uh, maybe to other users in the network, maybe to other assets in the network, such as in this example, okay, you can see a shared network drive. So in a very primitive way, I'll just simulate what, uh, what uh, uh, an, an encryption bot would do, and I'll just, just change the file name, something very simple. Okay, but the, the actual uh, uh, action would not be significantly different. Now, if I look at uh, uh, if I look at that shared folder, this shared folder that our Anna Smith uh, uh, was uh, kind of working on is actually located on the uh, domain controller, and for sake of this example, is a very like important asset to the organization, not just something you can just back up. Uh, so we can see that. Uh, 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 that uh, our user did this uh, kind of propagation. And obviously it's, it's a real point of concern, right? So what we want to demonstrate in here, in this case we actually, uh, uh, we actually uh, uh, set it to, uh, uh, there is a kind of fine tune that we need to do here, but we set it to uh, detect, it's going to show us prevent, but you'll see it as uh, detect when you run it, don't worry. So basically, we run it as uh, we run it in detect mode in order to demonstrate to the customer how this uh, damage kind of propagated. Otherwise, if it would have been on prevent, uh, what you would see is that uh, the file is not really being changed, and, and then it's slightly less impressive. But what we want to show to our customer here is the fact that now the security admin can receive a notification that a certain user coming from a certain device with certain details, certain credentials within the network is actually involved in the propagation of something potentially uh, very dangerous to our network. Now, it doesn't have to be obviously a, a, a ransomware bot. It could be uh, a whole set of uh, different things, okay? So just think about the customer that uh, uh, will receive, uh, 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 and th those are all like things that we can assume that, that either happened or we know that happened, but uh, for example, a uh, customer that uh, uh, his end customer reported something of uh, some increased latency in services and so on, and uh, may find out that uh, uh, the source of this latency was the fact that a certain uh, a server or even a certain user device was infected uh, uh, with uh, some kind of bot that tried to access crypto mining pool and so on and trying to use uh, uh, CPU resources to, to basically do mining uh, uh, activity and so on. So, so a lot of these things can actually be uh, uh, a very good use to what identity awareness brings because at the end of the day, identity awareness is an extremely effective way to bring in external intelligence into the gateway. And by doing that, it allows for a, a much efficient, much more efficient uh, uh, acquisition of identities in a way that is dynamic. And again, the idea is to demonstrate how it works with IPS, how it works with HTTPS inspection, how it works with all the checkpoint mechanisms in order to uh, uh, provide a much more kind of uh, uh, safe environments and largely automated environment for our users and our end users by proxy. So now uh, we've covered the uh, uh, second part of the demonstration. And again, everything we've uh, talked about and demonstrated is written within the guides. You can definitely, you're more than welcome to try it out yourself. 
and this uh, uh, is all uh, uh, great. And again, as I said, this is just a kind of suggested flow. If you have a customer who is not sure how identity awareness works and you want to spend an hour with him on the uh, uh, look and feel of uh, uh, the identity collector, how to install it, how it works, how it behaves, what load it puts on the domain controllers and so on, you can definitely like feel free to do that uh, on the exact same uh, uh, blueprint. Uh, also, if you're interested in a blueprint that where not everything is already installed, let us know as well and uh, just drop an email to Shai Levin and uh, I will try to get you uh, uh, such an environment. Uh, so this, is, uh, uh, this was the uh, uh, first part, uh, the longer part of the uh, uh, session today. Uh, we'll now move to your questions and then for, uh, for a brief update on some of the new stuff on identity awareness that's coming on IT20. So uh, I'll refer to uh, uh, the first question that was asked. And again, now is a great time to uh, submit more questions if you have them. I'll refer to the first question that was asked. Uh, what is the frequency uh, of the AD query uh, sent from the gateway to uh, AD server? Uh, basically, how fast will it take uh, to, have, to affect the changes and so on? Meaning, uh, asking how much time will go between the login event and the actual propagation of this change uh, uh, within, the, uh, 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 within the enforcing gateways. So again, we like to call it, uh, it's like near real time, okay? It's uh, uh, almost uh, uh, instantly. So you shouldn't, uh, uh, you shouldn't be expecting a very uh, a prolonged process with that. By the way, again, working with the identity collector instead of uh, AD query directly from the gateway will actually not, in not increase the latency. So uh, we're able to compensate that just by using a much more eff efficient protocol with the uh, domain controller. So again, we encourage you to do that. Uh, and don't, don't be alarmed of increased uh, latency just because you're going through another device. This is uh, uh, actually not very, uh, um, uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, a concern. Okay, so uh, uh, now uh, uh, waiting for a few more questions. So. You have uh, a minute or two to write down your, uh, uh, probably even more, to write down your questions. As we move to uh, Tzvika, who will tell us a bit about uh, some, uh, just a few of the uh, exciting uh, uh, features that, uh, uh, that you guys can expect in, uh, uh, in the upcoming, uh, uh, in the upcoming uh, release. Okay, so moving to uh, moving to Tzvi now. <clears throat> hey everyone. So uh, essentially, R eighty dot twenty well, is, is a is a release that we added quite a lot of content, a lot of enhancements, a lot of small but essential features that we that we think that will greatly improve your experience and well and a lot of as, as well as well as a lot of quality enhancements and so on so in a nutshell we can talk about one of the new concept concepts we introduced is the identity tags for example in the past you could find either an elder group or internal group using an access role it didn't allow you to have the flexibility to the flexibility to define labels, security group tags, any term you would like to use to enforce information that was received either from Mac solutions such as Cisco ICE or uh, or anything you use over your web API. So this flexibility is we feel very crucial for our, also for our future future integrations such as receiving groups over radius or as, or as part of the future SAML uh, authentication the token may have groups as well and uh, the identity collector has a support for syslog now as part of our IT20 we are well forming a well, a, well sort of a, an 
identity agents train where we would offer the download of the various identity agents such as the identity agents for endpoints, identity agent the, for terminal servers, the identity collector uh, from the download center and we will update it every couple of months with additional enhancements and quality improvements and 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 this information will well these announcements will be documented in similar form to what you have in your jumbos. Um, we have we had integrated two-factor authentication for the captive portal if, in case you are not using the transparent mode. Uh, we had incorporated the ability to use identity awareness for managed service providers in situations where the management don't have accessibility to the domain, to the LDAP that is protected by the customer gateway. So in order to choose access roles, you have, you have to query the, the domain, the, the LDAP. So we, are, we had the ability to, to have the gateway act as a proxy for that. And numerous identity agent, the identity agent enhancements such as automatic reconnection back to prioritize PDP, terminal server, port uh, allocation improvements, uh, additional improvements to the identity collector such as filtering per gateway and filtering per domain that we're missing for some of our customers. You can import an exclusion list from a from a file in order and not to def well to exclude each of each and every entry of a service account manually and well a lot of things to come. Additional thing which is not didn't make it to our IT to 20 but is already available as a customer release is our cross CMA identity sharing. We are introducing now a new concept where you can share identity information easily between domain and management domains and have the ability to filter it, for example, share selectively according to identity source, networks, networks, domains, and so on, and add the, the concept of hierarchy, where a given, given PDP can be in an aggregation or redistribution point, so you can add, so now the sharing is not on, on, only between a PDP to PDP, but now you can share this between to different layers, and as a result, have better scaling and control. This is in a nutshell. Okay. Pedro asks about third-party integrations like Aruba ClearPass. So we already have an, an integration with the Aruba ClearPass. The, the possible ways to integrate are either using Redis accounting, there is a stronger integration over web APIs that's, that's captured in the SK, and where Aruba had the, well, there is a model of Aruba that, we, that they had integrated with us that reports that is from their NAC, uh, from their NAC uh, directly to us, uh, and what the feedback we got is working pretty well. So uh, I do encourage you to move to. Okay. So I do encourage you to review the SK. Essentially, once a user or a machine logs into the logs into the to the next solution they all they also notify us over web apis about the identity that was added they can add information such as posture uh, posture uh, they we they can consume also if uh, threat prevention events from checkpoint and update their network well their NAC their NAC and, and its posture from us as well as from from there to from the from the NAC to checkpoint and well it's working pretty pretty great.
Dos minutos, Michelle. Okay. Another question. Okay. Is there is there any plan or okay, anonymous persons are asked if there are there are any plans to allow identity sharing over that gateway or using identity awareness over IP Uh If it's if it is possible to set to set the source IP like the internal one. So, yes, okay. so, so, so essentially, this is currently it's a limitation with that that you can't use identity sharing with it. The logic is that usually the, the sharing is done between two gateways, which are a more robust ones you would have the the hierarchy of the pdp to pdp sharing would be easier for uh, for you to distribute information but uh, there is this request had come once and once in time and you do recognize it we we had poc in the past but i didn't completely follow through because there are some limitations and uh, for required development if you have any concrete need, I do urge you to flow, follow the full solution center. Is the mood gone? Okay. Okay, guys. So another question was about the uh, uh, the access to all the various materials that you have, either videos or PDFs or anything that's uh, associated with uh, uh, um, one of our blueprints. That could be the uh, uh, that could be uh, uh, either a, um, either this uh, demo or any other demo on our cloud demo point. So I'm just pasting in the chat now the uh, link for the SK. And uh, you actually have an SK that summarizes and includes all the uh, uh, different blueprints with all the data on them and so on. Okay, so you can just uh, access that SK and from there you'll have access to all the uh, PDFs, videos, and everything that has to do with that. You don't you actually need to spin up an environment for that. Okay, guys, so uh, uh, now will be the best uh, time to submit your very last questions if you have them. And I will say also that uh, if you can only think about questions like, uh, I know you wake up tomorrow morning and you have an urgent question about identity awareness, just feel free to uh, submit it in our mailing list. Uh, and uh, we have a mailing list with very short SLA, so you'll get an answer uh, uh, very fast. Uh, again, I'm putting in the chat the, uh, 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 the address for the mailing list. Okay, so uh, uh, just uh, uh, subscribe to that uh, mailing list if you want to uh, be updated with the uh, uh, everything that's all of our announcement, all the various uh, questions and so on. So it's ad access at michael.chapman.com. Just directly, just pay to it. It's just the mailing list is uh, just for internal and not for partners. It is important to say the mailing list is for internal checkpoint uh, uh, users only. So if you want to uh, get something across to uh, uh, to R and D, to us, or to uh, Solution Center, or any other thing, just uh, uh, relay it through your uh, uh, SE. Uh, or any other uh, uh, or any other employee and an alternative you have for that is obviously to uh, get to us uh, via uh, checkmate okay this is our community site so feel free to uh, to ask uh, questions there as well uh, you can uh, pretty much post it under the uh, infinity uh, tab that you have in checkmate uh, specifically for those kind of questions okay so either checkmate if you're part of our uh, uh, community or partners, users and so on, or directly to the mailing list if you're an SE. Okay guys, so if there are no more questions for today, uh, we would definitely like to thank you again for your time and for joining us uh, for this session. I do hope it was interesting and effective for you. Uh, the session was recorded and recording will be shared with you for future reference. Thank you very much and uh, join us for the next session on that. Bye bye everyone.